like want to address, because all I've heard tonight from Bob, unfortunately, is compromise. Well, this question has to be for both. So, Chuck, we're going to start with you. Well, I couldn't agree with you more, Darlington. Uh, you know, it's much easier to sell, sell uh, yourself or anything in the world, and we are a business, and we're selling a product. And if your product is big, has vision, and helps people, they're going to buy it. Uh, you know, and uh, I agree with uh, Darlington 100% on this one. Uh, when Democrats get big again, when they stop being small, the Republicans have very little chance when we go back to being the big vision, big do Democrats. I think we reached our nadir as Democrats in, I think it was 1974, political science professor will correct me if I have the date wrong, but um, I think we reached the nadir of our uh, Democratic smallness when in the 1990s, there was a press conference held that I happened to catch on TV. All the Democrats came out of both houses of Congress to announce that they had just passed a bill that gives you a 60-day uh, notice before your business closes and moves to Mexico. <laughs> okay, our idea of reform now and our idea of bigness is that before your life is destroyed <laughs> on the NAFTA and your job goes to, you know, we're going to give you a 60 day notice. And we're proud of it. We're all out of our steps here today. <laughs> you love us now? We got to think big, Darlington. You're absolutely right. And we've got to, uh, you know, have vision. And we have to be willing to fight. Thank you, Chuck. Your time is up. Bob? Well, yeah, I agree a lot about America's sums, really. Um, we have no protection at all. If the company wanted to close its factory down and move to Mexico, they could just shut the gate Friday afternoon, and that's it. You're gone. Other countries said, things that said, you can't do that. You need permission of the government to close down and move your job. And before we'll give you permission, you have to negotiate with the town, with the workers, with the state government or national government. We have to see if we can keep this place open. We'll see if we can do the job training. We can come in and provide some loans for you. Absolutely nothing like that in the United States. So the Democrats got one little compromise through Congress. You actually have to talk to people and give them some legal notice before you close down in hopes that they will then jump in and maybe try to negotiate some kind of, of, of settlement to keep you there. Um, it was a little step, and um, it didn't go anywhere after that, I'm assuming because the political makeup of Congress changed, like Clinton's family league law. But people actually benefit from it in a small way, like people benefit from the Family Leave Act. Uh, they don't lose their jobs anymore because they're pregnant and, and having to stay home with an infant. It's a small thing, but for somebody, it's actually important. Like those original social security checks were, even if they were 25 bucks. Okay, Chuck, 30 seconds. No, I'm trying to say a word. And my question, Matt, yeah, is, you know, and Bob has mentioned this a couple of times, messaging. I'd like you guys to say what this time around would be the key message, and just to throw it out there, I think one would be public financing of elections to, to get this corporate stranglehold off our pillow. Bob, start with you. Well, I think the... Uh, I think the message has to be there are serious problems in the United States. Uh, obviously, the person, you know, the people on the street know that um, that this is 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 no longer. I don't know if you want to say it never was a just society. We have people at the top who do nothing of any importance, but have enormous wealth and power passed down over the generations. Uh, they control most of the important decisions in this country. They don't control every decision, or we wouldn't have a minimum wage. 
they decide the big decisions, like what kind of system we have, what kind of economic system, what kind of healthcare system, whether we go to war or not. Um, and that's not fair, it's not just, it's not democratic, and we want to change that system. And we want to make sure that everyone benefits from the enormous wealth of the United States. I mean, this is a huge, wealthy country, and yet we've got all these homeless people, we've got all these unemployed people, we've got people that don't have health insurance. We've got people that can't afford a decent education or go to a school where they have to share textbooks with all their classes and can't do homework for that reason. Um, that's the kind of message Democrats, with Frank, starting with Franklin Roosevelt, really sort of stood for. I mean, it was, it was tame because it didn't include equality for women, it didn't include equality for uh, various minority groups, Mexican Americans and others. But I think today that could be a message that every single person deserves those opportunities. Whether we're talking about equal opportunities for health care, for jobs, for education, for marriage rights, okay. Thank uh, you, et cetera. Chuck? Yeah, the yeah. messaging is so important and it's something our party really doesn't do. Uh, you know, the, um, with the banking industry, I, if I was starting a messaging program to the American people, it's messaging constantly on how we got into the mess we're in. The deregulation that went on, the taking away the protections for the American consumer, this, you know, justifying. When you just propose legislation and do something, the public wonders why you're doing it. There's no narrative to go with it. There has to be a democratic narrative justifying, a messaging uh, uh, system justifying why there was these protection in the first place before Ronald Reagan and, and his friends started taking it apart and George W. Bush finished. And look where we wind up. The economy is crashing, you know, uh, right at election time. It's because these, uh, the, we have to message our narrative for our existence, why we are Democrats. That's why we are Democrats. We believe that protections have to be in. It's not a game of monopoly. You remove all the protections, and then soon everybody has all the hotels and owns Boardwalk and Park Place. You know, one person owns it. That's what happens in, 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 in unregulated capitalism. We have to make the case for regulating it in a messaging system. Well, ultimately, I don't think, I don't think capitalism is compatible. Some countries have had some success at keeping capitalism under control, Denmark and Sweden and other countries. Um, but even there, it's, it's not doing well today. Um, so I, I think it's, it's going to be tough to, to make that work. Um, at the same time, Democrats have become too much you know, technocrats, you know, just manipulating little things and this and that, and again, ignoring the big picture. Yeah, and, and I think the way we talk about things has to change. I mean, uh, we have to get this fighting spirit back and not be afraid to call a name or two. Uh, let me just read you a quick quote. I hope we can get it in 30 seconds. This is FDR 1936. It's still valid today. We had to struggle with the old enemies of peace, business and financial monopoly, speculation, reckless banking, class antagonism, sectionalism, and war profiteering. Never before in all our history have these forces been so united against one candidate as they stand today. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hate. Mm -hmm. I like that. Thank you. <laughs>